Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Tama Nanta is a Thai pikuni, or a female monk, an international religious leader, scholar, and feminist. She was the first woman to be fully ordained among the majority Theravada Buddhists in her country. The nation's religious authorities did not accept female monks like many institutions that don't accept women in their clergies. Tamananta is determined to change this status quo. In today's episode of Direct Talk, Tamananta talks about how she sees the role and impact of religion in people's lives and why she believes gender equality and inclusive thinking is crucial for the whole society. I see that there is nothing that can stop a woman from working if that work is a good work for the benefit of for the benefit of herself and for the benefit of society there should be nothing to stop her so my my idea is each one of us should become change agent so that we can improve the world we can truly improve the world Tamanantar runs a temple for female monks in a suburb of Bangkok. For more than a decade, she has been a leading voice calling for gender equality in religion. She sees the issue as having a universal resonance. Discrimination, gender bias, happens in all religions, both East and West. They use religion to, to to strengthen, to strengthen the belief, to put the women where they are. As a religious scholar, Tamanantar points out that discrimination in religious teachings often reflects the way of thinking of male-dominated societies in historical times, including Buddhist denominations. Because of the social values of the time that is uh, crept in, you had to take it with a grain of salt because it was recorded by monks. So it was recorded from the interest of monks. Go back to the text and read very carefully. You will see the teaching is very beautiful. And in Buddhism, at least, I know that uh, the status of men and women in the eyes of the Buddha were equal. Just to give you an example, they said uh, women are obstacle, obstacle to the men's purity. The men are saying it. And because we have only men saying it, what the men, what the women would say, go back to the text and read the second line. The second line says that men are also obstacle to women's purity. Tamananta says the impact of the discrimination is felt by many beyond religion in societies such as Thailand, where the culture of religion is embedded in everyday life. Even though Thailand had a female prime minister and has numerous female CEOs, the discrimination is still felt, especially amongst the less educated and rural population. This discrimination is done in such a way that people feel they are denied of their own, the meaning of life. They feel that they are second class citizen. For example, uh, women cannot receive anything directly from the hand of the monks in Thailand. This happened only in Thailand, not in any other Buddhist countries. So the, the women are thinking that we are so impure, we are so bad, we are so, so low. That's why, you know, when you offer something to the monks, the monks have to, to uh, hand a piece of cloth or something, and then you put the offering on that cloth, you know. So, uh, it makes women feel very low, very low with this kind of treatment. One example of the impact of discrimination is the denial of ordination for women. In Thailand, almost all Buddhist men are ordained. They enter the monkhood for a period of time, often when they are still young. This is seen as part of the son's duty to his parents a way to honor them and give them religious merit. The ordination is often lavishly celebrated as a once in a lifetime treasured occasion for the whole family. The family would, would even sell the daughters in order to gain benefit, to financial benefit 
to give ordination to sons. If we realize that women can also be ordained, women can also accrue merits for the parents, just like how the sons are doing that, you know, that is a great lifting of the uh, suppression against women. That is why Tamanantā holds ordination ceremonies for women at her monastery. She has seen the joy of families who never thought that they could celebrate their daughter's ordination in such a way. In one family, they have six daughters. So the parents thought that in this lifetime, they will never ever have a joy. They have already decided that. But then when I start giving ordination, the eldest daughter came for ordination and the parents, they were all crying and weeping but because it is, they cannot even dream about it. The parents could not dream about it because they don't have sons. So they already had given up that dream, but now the dream becomes real. So it was very joyful. Tamanantar was born and brought up as Chatsuman Kapila Singh. Her mother was also ordained in Taiwan, in a different school of Buddhism from Thailand. Tamanantā was deeply influenced by her mother and went on to gain degrees in religion and philosophy, studying in India and Canada. She was married with three sons and taught at one of the top universities in Thailand. She was the first woman to host an award-winning program on religion on a major Thai television channel. She discussed Buddhism with intellectuals and religious leaders. I lead more or less a successful life as a professor, traveling, attending uh, conferences in many countries. I travel to meet Pekunese in different countries. I never thought that I would be one of them. Not until the day when I had this question coming up. One day when I was put, putting on makeup, there is another person, another voice in me asking me, how long do I have to do this? And that was the moment that I start questioning that this putting on makeup and the whole, the whole, the whole baggage of this putting on makeup, that is lifestyle of a lay person, came to the front for me to consider that, yes, I have enough of it and it is now that I give up. Tamananta realized that she could apply her academic knowledge to practice in order to bring about real change in society. Knowledge is the key. Knowledge is the power. And knowledge is the strength. That's, that's my responsibility. I felt it because in Thailand, nobody studied this issue. I was the one who had all the information, but I had all the information, but I was sitting on the ivory tower doing nothing about it. How can you bring about social changes when there is, you are not committed? Change will happen only when you change. It has to start from the individual sitting here that we agree on this, that we will be changing. Tamanantar gained her ordination as a Pikuni in Sri Lanka, another Theravada Buddhist majority country. She returned to establish female monkhood in Thailand in 2003. This led to denunciation from the authorities and a series of negative news coverage. No, no, how dare you wear the rope? They tried to do the character assassination, to kill you, to, to defame you, to make you infamous, so to say. But somehow I survive. I feel sorry for, actually you have so much energy, you can do so many good things. But to write a story about someone else, you know, trying to color her, that is a, a waste of energy. In the years that followed, female monks became a part of Thai society. Their number has reached nearly 200, and there are other temples run by bhikkhunis across the country. The people around us, uh, when they see that you are stable, that you are practicing according to the bhikkhunis, they start changing, they start accepting. You walk out more comfortably now. People don't, don't stare at you and don't look at you negatively. And uh, the fact that we have, I have started out, it make it easier path for the, for the younger generation. Tamananta sees the institutions of religions working to hold on to their power by keeping others out. She points out that this also leads to abuse of power. Thailand has seen its fair share of corrupt monks among the country's monolithic Buddhist authority. 
once when it is institutionalized, usually the structure, you know, when the structure comes, the power comes. Where does this power come from? The power comes from money. The power always comes with money. So when you give them money, it corrupts. And the more power you give them, the more energy to corrupt. It happens in all religions because human beings are human beings. Tamananta says that such desire for power can also lead to exclusion of others and the persecution of minorities. Buddhism, viewed as a pacifist religion, has also spawned radical monks, inciting violence and turmoil. Tamanantar hopes people can learn to recognize manipulation of religions for what they are. Within Buddhism, you, ha you also have radical Buddhists. Within Christianity, you also have radical Christians and also in Islam. They are using religion to support the idea, to, to, to support the idea, to concretize the idea by saying that, oh, this is what, what religion says, you know. So other people who have not studied religion will follow that, thinking that, oh, I, I want to be religious, you know, I want to be very strong to, to Islam, I want to be strong to Buddhist, so you follow this. If you do not separate this, you know, that's why you have so many wars and it comes under religious wars. Inclusive thinking is what could counter discrimination against women as well as minorities, says Tamananta. When we start talking about we, the minor differences will be overcome. We have to talk about the well-being of human. We have to talk about the well-being not only of human, but well-being of animals and well-being of the globe, the whole world. You cannot just separate yourself and be happy here. To realize that the world is connected, we cannot talk about I and you. We have to talk more inclusively. Then you will look at the world at a higher level so that we could improve the well-being of the globe as it is. For Tamananta, promoting inclusiveness and broadening people's vision is a crucial role of religion. Not necessarily Buddhism or Christianity or Islam. I think it is important that we have belief that there is a greater source beyond us. You don't have to belong to any particular religion, but I think uh, the sense of being connected with the larger reality is important. We have to see ourselves as small, minute uh, particle, part of this whole global system. So in order for us to make ourselves meaningful at all, we have to recognize the importance of being able to stay together on this globe. If we lose sight of the larger picture of the world, then we ourselves will become obstacle to what we are trying to work for. The benefit for ourselves is to let go of this, this clinging to I, me, my mind, so that you have space available for others. When you realize that when you actually share with them, your own gain will last, will last longer. Happiness comes from sharing. Sharing is one key word for the present society. Whether it is a Christian, whether it is Buddhist, it is Muslim, it's all you need sharing. Sharing of love and sharing of pain. And because we have this sharing of pain, that's why we learn to heal the world. When you really see the pain, then you will try to do your best not to repeat that which causes that pain. So this sharing comes as a basic, as basic of human, human mentality. And once when you can share both happiness as well as pain, then our society is much better than what it is now.